Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. We are now gathered together. Let us begin our holy celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we give thanks to the Lord, for He always gives us His healing. We give thanks to Him, for His mercy comes to us without boundaries. And so that we may become worthy for this holy celebration, let us pause for a while, and in silence, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, 
fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob departed from Beersheba and proceeded toward Haran. When he came upon a certain shrine, as the sun had already set, he stopped there for the night. Taking one of the stones at the shrine, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep at that spot. Then he had a dream. A stairway rested on the ground with its top reaching to the heavens, and God's messengers were going up and down on it. And there was the Lord standing beside him and saying, I, the Lord, am the God of your forefather Abraham and the God of Isaac. The land on which you are lying, I will give to you and your descendants. They shall be as plentiful as the dust of the earth, and through them you shall spread out east and west, north and south. In you and your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. Know that I am with you. I will protect you wherever you go and bring you back to this land. I will never leave you until I have done what I promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he exclaimed, Truly, the Lord is in this spot, although I did not know it. In solemn wonder, he cried out, How awesome is this shrine! This is nothing else but an abode of God, and that is the gateway to heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone that he had put under his head, set it up as a memorial stone, and poured oil on top of it. He called the site Bethel, whereas the former name of the town had been loose. Jacob then made this vow. If God remains with me to protect me on this journey I am making and to give me enough bread to eat and clothing to wear, and I come back safe to my father's house. The Lord shall be my God. This stone that I have set up as a memorial stone shall be God's abode. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In you, my God, I place my trust. In you, my God, I place my trust. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. In you, my God, I place my trust. For he will rescue you from the snare of the fowler, from the destroying pestilence. With his pinions he will cover you, and under his wings you shall take refuge. In you, my God, I place my trust. Because he clings to me, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he acknowledges my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. In you, my God, I place my trust. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia. Ikain mo ko o nakikinig ako sa iyong mga salita. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. While Jesus was speaking, an official came forward, knelt down before him, and said, My daughter has just died, but come, lay your hand on her, and she will live. Jesus rose and followed him, and so did his disciples. A woman suffering hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him, and touched the tassel of his cloak. She said to herself, If only I can touch his cloak, I shall be cured. Jesus turned around and saw her and said, Courage, daughter, your faith has saved you. And from that hour, the woman was cured. When Jesus arrived at the official's house and saw the flute players in the crowd who were making a commotion, he said, Go away. The girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. When the crowd was put out, he came and took her by the hand, and the little girl arose. And news of this spread throughout all that land. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, one of the things we would hear parents commonly say is that with all possibilities, they would give favor to the requests of all their children. At sino nga ba namang magulang ang hindi magbibigay ng mga bagay na magpapaligaya sa kanilang mga anak? They want to support them. They want them to be happy. As much as they can, parents will give their attention to the needs of their children. However, not every child has the same way of expressing his or her need. Some are very vocal, while others are somehow silent in expressing his or her request. But with instinct, parents, in most instances, are usually sensitive about the needs of their children, whether the request is expressed vocally or silently. In our Gospel today, Matthew narrates how two people express their request to Jesus. They request in different expressions, but it was a request of healing. An official was very vocal when he came forward and knelt down before Jesus, asking him that his hand be laid on his daughter who is ill, so that she would get healed. And the woman who was suffering for hemorrhages for 12 long years silently desired for healing when she came up behind Jesus and touched the tassel of his cloak. Two are different expressions of request. Both are in desperation of healing, 
and eventually, both requests were granted. Looking more deeply how Jesus responds to their request, we would notice that there was no selection of responding to those in need. We notice that the mercy Jesus gives has no boundary. He was with the crowd, but no one stops him to attend their need. Pero pagka minsan, kapag tayo may nais tulungan, medyo selective tayo. There are some options we also consider. But God, when He offers His mercy, there is no boundary. There is no selection. He always gives it to everyone who is in need. And it can be something we can think of ourselves. Because many people also say that not all our requests in prayer are always granted. That is why we would also hear some people wonder what should be the proper way of praying so that God would always grant our request. If you go to some bookstores, many inspirational books give guide to prayer. Some suggest your prayer must be communal. You must be praying that includes other people. Others advise to accompany prayer with good works, while some others would encourage personal prayer. And among those who give testimony about answered prayers, they say prayers are answered not always in our expected time, but God rather answers our prayers always in the right time. And we can imagine that we sometimes are like the synagogue official and the woman in the gospel. There are moments like them. We are also in desperation of our request, asking for healing, hoping that our need would be granted. Sometimes need of good relationship, sometimes need of success in our business, sometimes need of recognition by people whom we want to be with. But one significant thing we can get from the Gospel is about the attitude of the official and the woman who approach Jesus. If we are more observant, we would notice that they reach first to come closer to Jesus before they expressed their request. The official came forward asking Jesus to come with him, whereas the woman came behind Jesus and made her effort to touch him. More than anything else, they managed first to be in the presence of Jesus before they expressed their need of healing. And it is an expression of faith that they desire the presence of Jesus, wanting that they be close to Him. Dear brothers and sisters, 
in our life, we must also give our part to do the same. Many are the instances we express our request to God in prayers. Sometimes we express it vocally. Sometimes we utter our prayer silently. Too often, we present to God our wants. But in most times, we have to ask ourselves, do we always desire first to be in the presence of God? Do we acknowledge that His mercy has no boundary? Do we usually ask God, please come to me, accompany me in those times that I need you? Minsan, mas gusto natin, sasabihin natin yung ating pangangailangan kaysa tayo ang Panginoon ay samahan. Perhaps, that would be something we must do. To desire God's presence because we already know that His mercy has no boundary. Jesus will always give us our request. He will always give us His healing, whether we express it vocally or silently. Please stand. God never intended us to die. He created us for life, but we chose death. Christ, our Redeemer, restores us to life, and we come to our Father praying through Him. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may be a symbol of Christ's healing work by its care for those who are sick in body, mind, and spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that doctors and nurses and all those who care for the sick may show the compassion and gentleness of Jesus in caring for the least of his brethren. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, that people suffering from poverty may be drawn to Jesus who became poor for our sake. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, that we may bind up hearts that are broken through our kind deeds and consoling words. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, that the faithful departed may enjoy the radiant dawn of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, keep healing us from all evil and let your goodness shine on us by the power of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And His coming to glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, 
and Jose, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At a Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray. From every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down and we pray for God's blessing. May God bless you with every heavenly blessing, make you always holy and pure in His sight, pour out in abundance upon you the riches of His glory, and teach you with the words of truth. May He instruct you in the gospel of salvation and ever endow you with fraternal charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand before the grand horizon, five hundred years of faith, grateful today. We bear the gift of nation, totally yours, we gave ourselves faithfully yours until the end to your mission, Lord, we give our yes. 